and uh, we uh, uh, reviewed in discussion the um, Technical Memo 3 and te Technical Memo 4. Now, the, drafts, uh, uh, I would point out, preliminary drafts. Preliminary drafts, and uh, which uh, were uh, produced by uh, GHD. Uh, the, the town has a contract with uh, that firm to uh, basically update the, um, the planning on where we are for wastewater. And so we have uh, uh, Technical Memo 3, which covers Salt Pond, Technical Memo 4, which covers Town Cove. And uh, that essentially advances the work that was last done and published in, uh, let's see, 2009 by Sturmans and Wheeler and GHD as the follow-on uh, new name for the, for the uh, Sterns and Wheeler Company. So um, the, uh, uh, let's see, <coughs> the doing that work uh, supports, one, the effort that the town updates of thinking on how it will go forward on wastewater, but it also fits into the 208 planning that went on um, last year. Um, and, and it uses uh, the tools that uh, the Cape Cod Commission had developed and made available to all the towns on the Cape. And um, it, uh, let's see, it does a, it does a lot of uh, work in sorting through uh, what's seems to be possible and what doesn't seem to be possible. And if you look on the um, agenda we have here is um, <clears throat> they're talking initial hybrid approach. And, and what they mean by that is um, uh, thinking about what you would do traditionally in terms of sewering uh, the, the town as opposed to attempting to get the environment to in, in a way kind of help itself so there's... Uh, Charles, just yeah. an amendment to that. Uh, traditional approaches also include uh, IA, uh, you know, the, the IA approaches to uh, innovative alternative approaches to the, the uh, toilets and that sort of thing. It's not just sewers, it's, it's other mechanical means like that that have, have been used. Uh, what is IA? Uh, innovative alternative, and it, it covers the whole Sure. gamut of things uh, in terms of actually uh, a, a lot of it has it goes with the, the toilets and actually trying to remove the source of the nitrogen by not letting the, the toilet F, you know it doesn't go I don't I'm, I'm you know all fan I can't come up with all the but like composting toilets sure. would be one and then there were others like that other types types of things like that uh, where you basically it doesn't. It never gets into the groundwater. Yeah. Yes. The, well, let's see. They call it uh, what? Innovative alternative approach. Yeah. Because it's different from um, the previous baseline, and that that we call Title Five, and, and that was the redoing of the septic rules in Massachusetts in about 1975 or so, and, the, and that basically set. Or the how big a pipe has to be, how wide an area it has to be, how adequate the infiltration has to be. That's the old Title V uh, standard. Um, but we, um, uh, both of those, well, let's see, I won't say both of them. Um, Salt Pond um, has for the uh, the hybrid technologies, uh, possible use of what they call that permeable reactive barrier. It has possible use of um, the aquaculture. Um, and yeah, I guess that's it for the, for the two ideas. And, and basically it, it, um, it looks at a mix if we Put in per, a permanent reactive barrier someplace near the uh, um, National Seashore Visitor Center, 
that would perhaps take care of a certain portion of the excess nitrate that's getting into Salt Pond. If, if we um, went in the direction of an aqu aquaculture activity, that would be able to reduce some. And then if you factor in how much you're able to reduce by watching very closely how much fertilizer is being applied and also how you're handling your stormwater runoff, then you know, you're working your way down to uh, limit the amount of nitrate that's getting into a uh, salt pond. And then, and then the, the <coughs> essentially the same type of discussion applied to Town Cove for that part of uh, East Ham that drains towards Town Cove, which is, which is essentially uh, from the town offices all the way down to the Rotary, all that area on the east side of Route 6, all those houses. So uh, the, I, and uh, Jane had asked that group to um, uh, look at the draft and make comments. And uh, most of the folks in the group um, had prepared written comments or intended to. And basically the idea was that I think Jane was gonna call the group together again sometime in mid-December having received all the written comments and, and allowing the two contractors that are working on it to uh, um, add that add those comments to to the documents and come back with a uh, an advance an advanced draft on it uh, as part of that work there's also the um, um, the watershed reports and uh, uh, the GHD is also doing those reports, and, and I think Jane's intent is that uh, that that assembled group is also to review uh, those documents. And what I meant, mean by a watershed report, I didn't bring a copy with it, but basically, uh, the um, it's a new requirement coming from the 208 plan, and the Cape Cod Commission has sort of made a template of what the, what the watershed report should be. Certain things you have to say, um, you know, what's... Uh, I, I think, Charles, it might be better expressed as certain topics you have to cover. I mean, they, they don't tell us what we should say in response, but they set out a particular topic and say you have to address this topic and lay out, you know, what, exactly. what the various alternatives are. Yeah, it, I just don't want anyone to misunderstand no, no. what the commission told us. No, um, the um, yes, it is. It is particular topics that need to be addressed, and it's so basically there's there's five watersheds I think here yeah, in East Ham in yeah. East Ham that fall into that category of what you have to report for. So we have um, what we have Salt Pond, Salt Pond, Town Cove. Walk Harbor, Herring River, uh, what's the fifth one? I have them. And, and Wellfleet. Well, we share Herring River with Wellfleet. Uh, it's on the, it's on the uh, Wellfleet East Ham border. And we have very limited responsibility for it because most of it is in Wellfleet. Uh, it's a little bit like Town Cove. Uh, you know, we, we are responsible for a cleanup in Town Cove, but we only have a small section of Town Cove. Most of it is in Orleans. And the Herring River thing is the same sort of thing. There's a section of that uh, watershed uh, on that water body, uh, which is in East Ham, but the majority of it is in Wellfleet. And I can't think of the fifth one I have. Yeah, I, I think it is Wellfleet and it's Hatches Creek up there is the boundary between the two towns. And, and yeah, well, but that, I, is that not the Herring River one? <laughs> Herring, Herring River is um, down here by uh, First Encounter Beach. Okay, so that's a different one. All right, so it's that, it's that one up there that we have limited. Re it's whatever one we share with Wellfleet, we have very limited responsibility. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so basically it's, it's those smaller watersheds that discharge to salt water, to an estuary. That, that's the, the category of them. So, um, and those those drafts are in, and it's, uh, it's No, not quite. 
The drafts were filed last June. They had to be filed before the end of uh, June 2016. So we filed our drafts, and material has uh, Cape Cod Commission took that material, did some work on it, among other things, formatting, but also other sorts of things. And now they have returned them to all the towns, including us. Each, each town has received all its watershed reports back, and now the process is, does the town have any comment uh, with the product that the Cape Cod Commission has developed? And if so, they're supposed to return those comments to the commission. And that was one of the things that uh, Jane did ask, that uh, if we read through them and if we had anything that we saw uh, that we thought should be commented on to let her know. Uh, yeah. The, but obviously the town is also going through them uh, to formulate their own comments. Yeah, and I guess my thought is uh, I'm telling you this verbally rather than giving you a, a sheet of paper mm -hmm. because uh, I think by next month or, or January, we would in fact have what, what Jane would consider a, a final copy of those reports. But um, that's been a big piece of work that uh, the town has been doing in the last couple of months, working with the GHD and um, get, getting to, to um, the point that we have draft documents 15, 20 pages long, the two technical manuals before, I don't know if you remember, before we did that, technical manuals one and two had to do <coughs> with, uh, um, uh, let's see, I, I guess, what was it? One of them was the non-traditional technologies that were available, that more or less educate you, what was that? And I've forgotten what TM1 was on. It was the update of the 2009 plan. You're right, right, yeah, you're right. So, I have a question. Which, yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, just, listen, just okay, I just names. wanted to, because this triggered this, I just want to be certain. Every, did everyone get one of these? I don't remember when these things were passed out, so I don't know who was on the. No? Um, I have okay. one. Okay. You have one, so it must have been. Did you, Suzanne? Did All he, right. he just flipped. Oh, I think you just flipped. I have right something on. else. So this guy. Oh, I thought they were. Yeah. But that's, that's something different. This is yes. the waste manager. All right. Uh, I have this one you can take because I'm, I'm certain. <laughs> but I you could keep picking these up. Uh, we can get you another one, Suzanne. I could keep this for the Yeah, yeah. Uh, there was, uh, you know, it's just we know that we should be coming up with a list of what everybody coming on the committee should get. But <laughs> yeah. It <laughs> doesn't happen so well. Adele. But I'll, uh, I'll get some more copies from Jane and then I'll have one and I get one for Suzanne. You you have it, Jimmy, right? Because yeah. you would have been on the yep. committee, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. I'm stretching my memory. Did, did Jane basically have that document, what, about six months ago? To that would have been out? prepared after the tech memos one and two. So it probably came out. Is there a date on it? Sometime, I would think. In the summer? Or, yeah, in the summertime or possibly even before before June, I don't remember. I don't see a date. Yeah, okay. But that's, it was, it, it reflected those, those, the work in those two first technical memos. Yeah. So, um, okay. Um, uh, so my question was to sure. Boat Meadow. Which one is Boat Meadow? Um, she, 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 you listed here. Oh, I, the, I did, I did, didn't I? Nauset, Rock Harbor, Wolfley, Boat Meadow, and Herring. Um, I'm not sure which there's a Well, the, the next salt bar south of Herring would be Boat Meadow. Um, it's kind of where the bridge is. Yeah, where, where, where the bridge goes through the marsh, that's Boat Meadow. That's Boat Meadow. Uh, that's not Herring, huh? Uh, Herring is the next salt marsh further north. But it's also the the way of saying it is it's behind First Encounter Beach. Herring. Her, Her, Herring River. Yeah. That's we Herring River. How's that little thing that runs oh, in? Sometimes yeah. it has Herring water, sometimes it doesn't. I was going to make that comment earlier. I was like, how many towns have a Herring River? <laughs> <Yeah>. Everyone. <laughs> but it's, it's the no one. And no Herring. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, sometimes it has water, sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> but they nonetheless call it a river. <laughs> mm -hmm. The... the um, um, Yep, yep. 
Uh, okay, let's see. I um, wanted to uh, talk a little bit about uh, the Orleans Water Quality Advisory Panel. And um, I think an important thing to know there is that when we had the election on the 8th of November, the Orleans folks also were voting on spending money, appropriating money. And so they did appropriate um, all of the money that the, basically the, the project had asked for. And um, that's important because as they stepped into the work, uh, I'm just looking to see if there was a they had um, some money, but perhaps not all the money that they needed to do. So they were being kind of very careful as to, what, to not overtask on, very, on various projects basically uh, making a commitment for, to, to spend money that they actually had not appropriated up to that particular point. So um, that's, that's good it, when you're kind of overall thinking of the management. The, um, now, a, a, um, um, in the past 30 days down there, in making their explorations of up around their landfill, closed capped landfill, uh, with the idea that the, uh, they uh, were pretty sure that so, uh, str a strong nitrogen contaminant was getting out of their landfill, uh, and they were beginning to think about could they use a, that permeable reactive barrier technology to deal with it. Well, um, uh, what what they've come to understand is that. <clears throat> Yes, they have significant nitrate coming out of their landfill, but in doing that work, they also discovered that they had uh, a dioxin, 1,4 one, uh, dioxin coming out, as we do, as we have as a, as a contaminant. And as far as I know, that was their first knowing of that they had that contaminant. And, but they also realized that the way the land is shaped now the surface water drainage kind of um, discharges water in the area of the landfill, which then causes that water to flow through the landfill and pick up uh, nitrate and go on. So it looks as though for them, their future involves uh, correcting that surface drainage flow as well as putting in permeable reactive barriers. It, I'm... Um, uh, it's good in the sense that I think that at least you know the size of the of the work that you have to step up to, but it, and that it can be done. It would, and actually, it may in fact be a little bit fortunate for them because I understand they had plans to do some redevelopment of space for the um, DPW to use, and and of course when they realize they have that surface water drainage issue, then that sort of uh, made them change their plans for how they're using that land because they have to make room for uh, the drainage to go around the landfill. Um, they're also <clears throat> talking about uh, working with the county, uh, George Hoyfelter's office, and he's, I guess, the director of public health for the county. And he's... Um, do, has done and is doing a fair amount of research in figuring out how to make septic systems better. And he's come up with one called a uh, nitrogen uh, reduction barriers. And um, basically, uh, if you're familiar with the way the septic systems work, you've got the, the house, you've got the flow from the house or the commercial building, you've got a tank, and, and then which settles out, and then you're just uh, infiltrating liquid out in a, a series of pipes in a horizontal way. Well, he's been coming up with things that could be put under the pipes a little bit that would improve things significantly. And apparently he's got some pilot money, and it, Orleans was thinking that they may be able to do a couple pilots of his new technology. Uh, and um, to me, uh, uh, it, it's 
<coughs> it it uh, spikes my interest. Uh, for, for one thing, the Cape is, in fact, um, a hard place to have a, 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 a correctly functioning septic system because it's got so much sand. And if somebody has come up with something better that may, that uh, basically what, what they're trying to do at this point is they're trying to prove it works to the point a regulator would allow it as a new uh, technology for, for an area that isn't, isn't in fact uh, functioning as it needs to do. Um, I don't know if it would ever uh, lead to uh, a, a, uh, an installation of what we were talking a little bit earlier about that um, innovative and alternative technologies. Basically, what George has come up with is, is, a, is a process that fits into that category. There are other ways of doing it, too. But Charles, excuse me for interrupting. Yeah. Are there instances where the septic system and the groundwater actually collide? I mean, the, the groundwater is so high, septic systems aren't that, you know, very close to the surface, but is there some cross-contamination? Uh, well, it, it, it's a long story. The, That's the, kind of what you're talking about. I mean, no, it's not. It's, well, it's well when, when a, a homeowner buys a piece of ground and has to apply to get a, a permit for a septic system, um, if the if there's not enough separation on that piece of ground naturally between the surface and the groundwater, <clears throat> an option the Board of Health has is that they would stipulate that they must uh, add soil okay. to add okay. distance. And, um, and that, that is uh, a way of, of working around it. And I don't know if, you, if, if you've gone through areas that are a little bit like that and you've seen that kind of... Uh, Oh, I don't know, maybe... Uh, we used to call them Indian mounds. Thir mound. yeah. The Indian mounds. You know, 30 feet by 50 feet or something like that that's about four feet higher than everything else around it. And you say, wow, that's, that's their septic system in there. And, and that was a condition to, to have it. So it'll, it allowed the town to step away from having a groundwater contamination issue and it allowed the homeowner to have a place to build their house and whatnot. So... Your discussion of nitrogen just triggered that question, but I, it's not related, really. Yeah. yeah but, uh, some, but the effluent does leach into the groundwater. Eventually, yeah. Has well, to. That's, yeah. 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 And so I'm you get, you get nitrogen level. and phosphorus from the, yeah. from the effluent. Yeah. I think sometimes, though, the Indian mounds tend to evaporate a lot of the fluid. Thing. Well, it may be, but I mean, yeah. in, in a normal septic system yeah. like what I have in my backyard, that effort right. is going it's, into the ground. It's not, not evaporating much. <laughs> that's, that's, what, that's a lot of what the drinking um, water issue was about. Do they do Indian about. mounds uh, on Cape Cod? Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. I didn't know that. It was common in Vermont, but I well, didn't um, see them here. You no, know, I've uh, seen them in a number of times. That, that, that's, that's a remedy. You know, that's something the Board of Health can say, well, you know, you can't do the old oil-style conventional, but if you would do it this way. And, and uh, we, um, I've been to Board of Health meetings where the consultant for the homeowners or the homeowners themselves will come in and uh, um, in, in a public meeting here with the Board of Health uh, make their application and state their case and whatnot for, for what they would like to do. Work that George Hoyfelder was is doing is a, uh, you sent us an email some months ago actually uh, with a link to a presentation he made to the uh, Falmouth Water Management Committee in which he he did a de uh, demonstration I guess I could find it if I look here in my email stuff I may not be able to because I got different different periods of time or <laughs> different sections for strange reasons. But uh, so I guess basically, uh, you know, I, I'll undertake to look back and see if I can find that email and recirculate again. It's a very, he, uh, it's, a, he, it's a very interesting presentation. And in fact, what he's doing is sort of, is this, earn the sort of colloquial name layer cake. It's the idea of, of having layers of things. One of the things I don't know if I remember correctly, it was sawdust or, or something like that. It's, it, he has different different approaches. I mean, it, he, he has little patches and he's done different things with different patches. And uh, 
part I remember from the demonstration is he shows the grass growing on top of one of these places. Of course, basically, it's putting the, the nitrogen back up into the soil and the grass growing vibrantly on top. So, uh, but that, so that is, that is there, and it's, uh, it's interesting stuff that he's doing. Yeah, no, I th and, he, and he's kind of recognized as being the, uh, a leader in coming up with the better technologies in, in it to remedy where we find ourselves now. Um, the couple other points I was going to say is that, um, again, at the advisory panel meetings that, that I go and listen to, um, there were 25 percent design for sewering the, the village of uh, Orleans down there where Main Street and the CVS pharmacy and, and all that is. <clears throat> the, uh, and and um, it's not easy. Basically, the discussions they're going to have to go through is that how, how much area do they need to sewer? Um, the, uh, and there are a number of commercial establishments that have uh, come up with a, an advanced way of dealing with their own sewerage down there. In other words, the, the, the business owner has come up with something that would meet uh, what the state of Massachusetts would require, but they've had to invest a fair amount of money into it. It could be just a holding tank, which you know is, is emp emptied every week by a truck or something like that, or it could be a little more sophisticated. So the, it's the discussion with the business owners and the design engineers as to perhaps how they can um, build a system to take care of the need, but also protect the investment that that businessman has already made in a facility that they might sort of say, well, we'll assume that uh, it'll last for 10 years, and when you need to upgrade it, at that point you'll switch over and get onto the, the sewer system. Uh, and um, that's basically citizen volunteers and business people sitting and talking and finding out who has what and what's possible and uh, working their way through that. And they, and they say that's what 25% <laughs> design means at that, at that point. Those discussions are going on. The, the uh, uh, owner of uh, Snow's general department store down there, uh, I guess his name is Sid Snow, he uh, seems to be a, a person in the know because he essentially gives short reports at the monthly panel meetings and uh, describes where they are on that. Uh, another point down there is that in the, in the, uh, on those panel advisory boards, uh, they're thinking quite seriously that they want to establish a staff position in the town of Orleans that would take care of all of these water issues that have sort of been just separate things that now are before that panel. Um, and uh, it's, it's not uncommon, looking back the past 40-some years, where or different organizations have found themselves in need of a staff person that understands all of the newer things that have to be, have to be done to protect the environment. Uh, you know, companies would hire an environmental specialist, or the government went through that process, um, uh, picking up staff. And so they're also going to go, there also seems like they're going to talk through the process of who, what, what functions should be given to that person, what, uh, you know, what place within the uh, town structure of organization should it be, does he report directly to the town administrator, do they report in, under some other office, planning or engineering or something like that. I'm, uh, I, I, it's a way of com kind of comparing how we operate here. Um, Jane, you know, as, a, as the health specialist, health, health agent, um, she's the one that catches the, uh, the environmental water duties that not, are not you know, otherwise directed towards, I guess you might say the border health or so. Okay, so I think that uh, 
gives you a little highlight of, of what's there. Uh, let's see. Let's talk about um, where the Orleans folks are in, in their shellfish uh, remediation uh, project. They um, basically, all this summer, they've been growing uh, oysters in floating bags in Lonnie's Pond. And they say that that's gone very well. <clears throat> and their intent is to take those same oysters out and store them over the winter. And I guess the idea is that they, uh, they're either incorporated into another shellfish project, which they intend to do, or they go back into Lonnie's pond and do another cycle. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, I, I'm not familiar with growing oysters, but the idea is, I guess, you have to, um, they have to be protected from freezing. So, uh, and uh, just taking the bags out and keeping them wet through the winter, I guess, is uh, the way they deal with overwintering uh, oysters. So um, now, um, so they have Lonnie's Pond, and that's going to continue next summer. They have a place called Kent's, Kent's Point Reef, and uh, the plan there is to establish a, a uh, uh, oyster reef where one is no, not there now, but the existing uh, topography is, is suitable for that kind of thing. And, and that's another one of the projects where they are trying to figure out how much benefit you get from how many oysters to cost you how much type, type of deal. They're, it's not their point to grow oysters so much, it is to, is to uh, figure out what the costs are, what materials, what labor, and what the predation and, and all that is, is going to be. So, um, let's see. Uh, they, as I think I've told you last week, they also also have their project where they're going to do a, um, a, a inventory of the cohogs in Town Cove, and um, I I guess that's uh, and they're now we're going through the process basically of consulting with the uh, uh, shellfish growers in Orleans as to how to do that in a sensible way. I mean, it's, they were saying that there, there was about 13 individual commercial growers of shellfish, and those are uh, local folks that know the estuaries, and um, uh, basically asking them to help guide the inventory, you know, because they would essentially say, well, this is what we know about this, this would be, you go out and verify this here and that there and that kind of thing. So, <clears throat> and that would involve their uh, harbor master, shellfish warden, uh, basically sitting down with as many as folks that are willing to discuss uh, what, you know, what is where and how to go about counting it. And there's also the a aspect of uh, basically making a statement that all the intent is to clean up the water in the estuary, but it would also have uh, an aspect of uh, expanding the, the, the growth. And it may in fact be that uh, uh, more leases would be coming out of it, which, which, they, which the group was essentially saying, well, that's something that the growers perhaps would uh, like to see because they... Uh, I guess there is some feeling that they're limited by the number of leases <laughs> that the town would give them. So, okay. Um, and I guess the, then the last one of the four tasks that they have is trying to design uh, that, that target in the future as to how they would have more shellfish out there um, but they would also have the participation of the local growers in some way, so both sides would be winning. And um, actually, it's kind of neat when they were talking about the um, inventory. Uh, but one of the options was that they say, well, if you get the growers to go out there, follow the procedures that we have for how you do an inventory, 
but basically allow them to keep the shellfish uh, outside any permits they already have, uh, that would be something that they thought, well, that, that would be a plus for them, that they essentially have more shellfish to sell in that year than what they otherwise would have had. All right. Um, let's see. We got, how about, <laughs> how about dredging uh, not, uh, Nosset Estuary, that's something to talk about too. Um, and basically what I have is just more sp spoken information. Um, there, I don't know whether you noticed it, but in the Cape Codder, on the 11th of November, uh, there, under East Ham, there was this short little article uh, that talked about dredging uh, Nosset uh, Marsh. And um, it, uh, the short of it is that they said that um, the um, the cost for the uh, the study um, is three hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and they have that money. And the uh, the the actual dredging itself, they were. The they you're referring to. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, you say they have that money. Who who has the money? Yeah. All right. Let me see if I can make some sense here. <laughs> is, is this, I mean, if this is the, the Orleans dredging thing, I, I don't know what that article's about. Um, it is, it is, okay. or Orleans dredging. Paul and Paul Lag, town planner, and Shana Brogan, the, is she the natural resources officer? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I guess <laughs> too many titles. They did a, a report to the uh, selectmen at the last board of selectmen meeting, mm -hmm. which I guess would be a, a, a week ago, Monday. And they reported on uh, what Orleans, they had had a meeting with the uh, Orleans people who were involved in this uh, about the preliminaries of Orleans thinking about the dredging, which is uh, solely for navigation purposes first, <laughs> get that on the table. You know, a couple months ago they were talking about dredging as a way to deal with flushing and reducing nit nitrogen and whatever, yeah. and they did that feasibility study, uh, and that, that was it. But the dredging they're talking about now, as I understand it, is solely for the purposes of improving navigation, uh, especially for fishermen going in and out. Uh, and they had had this meeting, and uh, ultimately, if Orleans comes up with figures and stuff and is going forward, they will then w want us to cooperate, <laughs> which basically means uh, putting up some of the money. Uh, but as, as Paul and Shana reported it, uh, they felt that Orleans' planning at this point was so preliminary uh, and was far distant from having hard numbers as to exactly what it was they had in mind, what the extent of the dredging would be, that sort of thing, and also what the cost would be. And so the consensus at the selectmen meeting seemed to be, well, when Orleans has firmer information about exactly what it is that they intend to do, that will be a time to talk. But right now, we don't have enough information to talk about it. The, um, y yes, yeah, the, the, um, the, <clears throat> Orle the town of Orleans has engaged an organization, a company, that's called uh, Woods Hole Group, and the, the Woods Hole Group folks had an, uh, an initial planning meeting this past week, and that kind of is where the information is coming from that uh, Adele is mentioning that Paul and Shana uh, talked to our board of selectmen about. But the, um, it, in my, the newspaper article says that they have $350,000 to do the, the planning. Uh, and I think I recall that being voted last spring in Orleans at their town meeting. That's, that's my memory. Uh, but uh, Shane and Paul basically told our board of selectmen that uh, the estimated cost at this point is between 1.5 and 1.7 million dollars to do the actual dredging work, and uh, and, I, and Shana made the comment that 
to get the permits would take three or four years, so it's, it, it's that far off. Uh, but um, the uh, commercial fishermen who actively use the channel through Nosset Marsh to get to the ocean um, were at that planning meeting that was held by the Woods Hole group earlier, or, uh, or actually within the last month. Um, they, I went to that meeting and it was, um, I thought, quite productive because we were talking about folks that have been out on that water and, and over a number of years and have a good sense for where it, it's becoming difficult and where it's, it's still okay. Um, it, it, it does seem to me that basically what they were saying is that um, inside Town Cove is okay mm -hmm. based on the previous dredging that was done, I don't know how far back. But there is that area, once you get more towards the ocean from Town Cove, but not actually to the inlet where the problem is. And it, it, what they're saying is that they, they know they wouldn't be doing it so much in Town Cove, and they know they would not so much be doing it at the inlet, but they would be doing it in that piece of water that threads through there. Um, well, they don't have any buoys either. That's a nuisance. Have you gone through there? I've been stuck out there. Have you? Yeah. And if I'd known where the channel was, I might not have been. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, when I just looked on the map, and um, the it does appear that that channel, um, to some extent, represents the boundary between the two towns. <laughs> And so I, I could see where there might be an issue of, well, who's going to put out the buoy on which, which piece type of thing. I, I don't know for sure, but it, I looked at the map carefully the, when I got back home from that meeting and tried to get an idea of what's, what's what. So um, I guess for us the, the thing to think about is that, well, here is this uh, five-year idea of doing more dredging, but it's also, we're look, we'll, in five years from now, we'll have come to a point on Salt Pond uh, that we will have done something, and it's likely that uh, Orleans will have come to a point in Town Cove that they uh, are, are doing something more or ha have decided not to with respect to quahogs and things like that. Charles, with the, with the dredging, do you also gain flushing effect? I mean, I would imagine. Now that, that was what or they not. were saying three or four months ago, and they've dropped that, right? Yeah. Well, well um, y yes. I mean, I, I would say just, you know, because I've played in a mud puddle, uh, that, well, yes, there would be perhaps a opportunity for more movement, but the hydrologists would be the ones that would have to say, well, it's this much, and that, that's qu quite a bit for that area, or it's negligible for that area, that type of deal. Suffice it to say that when when dredging was first put forward as a nitrogen removal tool because through, through flushing, there was vigorous debate as to whether or not it would, it would effectively, uh, it would make any effective change. Especially since part of the flushing they're talking about is going through the inlet. And there were numerous people who pointed out the, <laughs> the inlet changes constantly yes. and uh, all sorts of other problems with that idea. So. Uh, We'll see what, what they say, but uh, I, I'm not hopeful that, and I think that's why they're not pushing it anymore as flushing at all, but they're simply saying it's to improve navigation in the area. Yeah, and the, um, there, there's also, uh, I guess the hydrologists would be, who would study this would be the best ones, but how, how long would you have the benefit from it? Uh, Three years from the dredging. I don't know about the, how a flushing benefit, but in terms of the dredging itself, its effect on the bottom in that area, it's three years, is the estimate. Yeah, and, and uh, a lot of money for three years. Mm -hmm. And if you think you, you know, if you're really looking forward to that as an important part of maybe that water navigable, so you're talking about repeating that expenditure. 
yeah. with a little plus because we always have a little inflation. Yeah, how many people are impacted? And, I don't know. I just, a lot of boats that go out of there, like. Well, the, in the summertime and uh, recreationally? The commercial guys seem to be keeping their boats just behind the inlet and then going out there in a small boat to get to their, their uh, yeah. uh, 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 ocean boats. Yeah. Last time they were, uh, I guess it was last year, and one of the, some, some big boat went by and cut someone's line. The boat started drifting away. They're, they're 16 foot California, uh, Carolina skiff, I think it was. So we had to go in our rowboat and go catch this thing pulled back to us. buoy. I don't think the people who cut the line even knew it. Do you have any recreational boats going out? Uh, yeah, area? but you know, the, 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 if, like, like me, for instance. Uh, yeah. No, I mean, you know, if, if you're on vacation or whatever it is, you, you, go, you go with the tide. Yeah, the high tide's no problem. Oh, yeah. Most people use it is. Yeah. <laughs> no, so it's deadly. Okay. It's tough, yeah. I was, my, most of the time I was doing the... the, the it's yeah. not a, it's we shallow and there's that. a big... The bar's outside. we didn't have to go for the water sampling. We didn't have to go outside of Town yeah. Cove yeah. for that. Yeah. Uh, I was like, the no, two I, times I, I got caught was other reasons. You, know, you get through the inlet, but then you got problems on the other side. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't... I think... Basically, what is happening in New Orleans is they are getting pressure from townspeople, and that that's where the, the dredging idea is coming from. It's not that somebody, uh, I, that's my impression anyway from what I've been reading in the papers and stuff, that it isn't that somebody in uh, their water thing suddenly said, well, let's, let's dredge this. Uh, but there are people who, you know, they want it, they want it to be better. Uh, and there are a lot, I think a lot of people there along that that edge, that other side there of Town Cove, who, who are on the water, who do have boats, and they go out there. Mm. And I, I think they have a little little influence in town. <laughs> yeah. Well, the... Uh, Why does it take four or five years to do this, to get the approvals or to go ahead? Yeah. Well, I, what do you do I, with the mud that you dredge out? I mean, yeah, that was a big problem at Rock Harbor. That's one of the things they're going to they have to figure the, out. The, the everything they dug site up. is in Cape Cod Bay. Yeah, you have to tell go out about 15 miles into the bay. I don't know what you do on the ocean side. Well, I maybe think they you don't. might have no. to go all the way. You could, might, you might just have to go all the way around. I don't know. Around P Town, they won't let you dump it out in the. Uh, well, you have to get a permit. And oh, I understand that. Yeah, but yeah. That, that's part of I think what the delay is. I mean, first they have to identify a site. They have to identify a site that the state will approve. Uh, and you sure. dump it at sea, you don't bring it ashore. And no, uh, that's what they did at Rock Harbor. They, they, in fact, they, were dig they weren't they were using pumping. They were digging this stuff up and putting it on barges. And yes. then they had to wait for high tide to get out Rock Harbor to, because at low tide you can't get out. So at, at, at low tide you'd see barges out in the water waiting for high tide to come back in again. Well, empty. They probably can't even get a barge, I wouldn't think, through Are the we? inlet. They probably can't get a barge through the inlet, can they? At Rock Harbor? No, no, in North. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. No. I don't. That's true. I don't know where you have the right to day. Take it out I bet the people think of this. They think they're going to pump it into the marshes well, next to it. No, the the what I've heard at the yeah. meetings would be that um, they would discharge it uh, uh, to the ocean shore, and it would be uh, oh. enhancement for uh, basically Nosset Beach and down to the south, which <clears throat> which makes the most sense. <laughs> <clears throat> it, uh, I have seen... Right. Orleans, Norset Beach. Yeah. Yes, Orleans, Norset Beach. It, 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 and when you stop and think about it, the, what I understand is that <clears throat> the ocean is wearing away the shoreline on Cape Cod, and anything that gets washed off the land into the water then pick, goes on a s slow motion down towards Monomoy. All right, so what we have in... Oh, I thought it was going north at that point. Uh, it, the, the Wellfleet Toro line is what I, just rule of thumb is what I've heard is that normally going south. So it's the material that's being taken out is really just sand that was brought down to the inlet, pushed in. We're picking it up and we're putting it back, but south of the inlet and it just keeps on moving. Okay. So, that, you know, that, that sounds reasonable. Um, and it, so we don't have to set aside any piece of, because that's all seashore land, 
you know, all, all around through there, back up to the Penniman House and that kind of business. Uh, and, you know, if you tr if you thought you were going to uh, stockpile it on the land, you'd be disturbing a, a historic oh, yeah. area, and that w you, that would be so a, a pretty well, big Penniman loss. Penniman is on the other side. Yeah, it's on Penniman the east Penniman is on the north. east hand side. Yeah, it's north of what we're talking about. Well, well but, but actually, actually, the shallow water is looking almost straight out from it. Yeah. Yeah. The. Uh, yeah, well, well the, Fort Hill you're talking about, right? Yeah, but, the House. Uh, yeah. Uh, the but that, that's all north of the inlet. It's on the other side. No, no. That, the inlet, inlet wraps no, around. The Penniman House is about even north-south with the uppermost part of Orleans. And so most of that channel... Oh, that, yeah, when you look out, most, you see that octagonal Most of house. their channel that they're talking about is, is that area out in front of, well, we, I'd say the Penniman House yeah, type yeah. of thing, but gen generally that's the area they're talking yeah, about. Not, right. not as far as Town Cove and not as far as the inlet, but in that general area. That's where I've gotten stuck twice. <laughs> <laughs> but they would... Yeah, one time I thought I, we were going to be there for to the low tide. So they would deposit the dredged materials there? No, I think what he said was they take a, the, they pipe it, right? Pipe talking it. about pumping. Yeah, the big, uh, big, uh, big and pipe. And the pump would go over the east to go over the barrier beach into the ocean itself and then head south. What's I don't know. My understanding, of, I mean, there's so many different ways that you can dredge a, dredge a thing, but my understanding was that sometimes you get somewhat sludgish mm -hmm. material that you're dredging, or at least that's one of the applications of dredging, is to remove the, like, nasty stuff from the bottom. So... I would assume that'd be part of this survey to be like, well, what is the composition of the stuff you're dredging, and you want to just dump it on one of the nicest beaches in the country? Well, Shauna Brogan has an answer for you. She's already told us that it will take um, three to four years to get the permit. <laughs> Which That's is another why. thing. <laughs> three to four years to get the permit, and then million, over a million dollars later, and it might wait. Might, so by the time you're done dredging it, you need to apply to dredge it again. No, no, you start the application. Yeah, right. right. Well, as soon as well, you're done, start the next yeah, application. But, but no, I, I, I think it's good background information for uh, the table to have in the sense because the public would look upon it, well, as how much money are we spending to basically on our environment? And because, you know, we're saying that uh, we, we certainly need to do something on salt pond. They're saying 100% removal. Of nitrate is, is, is uh, going to don't mix this up with nitrate removal, Charles. Cause no, I no, no, he's saying it's, people. No, it's the okay. and people are being All right. it's public just, money. Just keep this totally separate because I don't think we want to spread confusion, okay? Uh, no, but um, because that's what they used to talk about dredging, and I think that's what's probably still in a lot of people's minds yeah. when they well, hear dredging. Ex exactly, exactly. What I'm saying is that uh, if the public looks at it as spending of money and stops there, uh, and what maybe a little bit more information would say, well, it's yes, it's spending public money, but this money is to improve the water quality in uh, Salt Pond, and this money is safety navigation in, through Nosset Marsh, you know. But, you know, I mean, yeah, it, it takes people a while to absorb the details of the situation. Be like Scott, wait for high tide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we had a great time putting, walking around the boat as just sitting there on the mud, you know. Also, t hundreds of torture crabs, you know. We were actually kind of pushing them out of the way of the feet and stuff, trying to get the boat back to deep water. I had to well, drag we, a kayak <laughs> across Scott, to the, Scott, the do beach. We, do we but have never a third a alternative boat. where you would be involved here in some way? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you just leave it alone. It's my, my vote if you want. I mean, okay, yeah, it's one of the things you can't. You can't get out of Rock Harbor at low, low tide. I don't propose doing anything about well, that either. Well, uh, <laughs> as a Massachusetts uh, native, but not having lived on the Cape, I'm very happy to listen to folks that have more information, uh, having been here and, and thought about what needs to get done and what can be put off for a while. So, um. well, can I ask a question? Just to, so the idea of dredging for nitrogen mediation, does that have to do with the fact that the stuff compo like decomposing on the bottom is a problem from stuff that's just like run off into it? Is that how that works? Well, uh, yeah, just thinking about it. Okay. My inter salt pond has 
a lot of muck is, is what they call it. It's sand, but it's just uh, uh, partly decomposed organic material that in that environment isn't decomposing anymore because it's cool and there's not much oxygen down, down there. Okay. Um, now, uh, the, um, and it appears uh, that in Salt Pond, because of where it is, it has slowly increased the amount of muck over the years because people talk about flounder fishing in there 30, 40 years ago, and, and, and those two things don't mix, flounder and, and muck. And, and muck as far, you know, my way of understanding, because th there is very little oxygen in that muck mm -hmm. in the summer that would support anything uh, living and whatnot. Okay, now, uh, I'm, I do know that in uh, Rock Harbor, they essentially have a every 10 year type of uh, uh, routine to um, de deepen the, the, the boat basin and the channel out. And as I understand it, uh, what's in the boat basin over 10 years is a lot of organic stuff. So it's probably kind of sounds a lot like muck. Mm -hmm. All right, now, but uh, in the past, they've been able to dig it up, put it on a barge, take it far enough out into uh, Cape Cod Bay, where there is, in fact, the official dumping area where, where they dump it. So, yes, I mean, you, there are situations where you're dealing with, you know, just handling old organic material that's... Some uh, of that organic material, though, in Rock Harbor is the result of the fact that it is a boat basin. Okay. I mean, it's not... Uh, organic material that would naturally be occurring if it wasn't being used as a boat base. Okay. Uh, including, there, there are thoughts that perhaps people violate an, a number of the rules <laughs> when they're in the boat basin as to what they should or shouldn't dump off their boats. Uh, mm. but, uh, but even aside from that, I mean, it's just stuff that happens. I mean, you got <clears> oil coming <throat> out of the boats, you got oil, yeah. So that, that, that is a, a very, specific problem so far as our estuaries are concerned that's a specific problem to rock harbor yeah. that it has that concentration of boats in there yeah the um uh all right well um the the, the, the whole and i i didn't follow all the details of it but the theory was that and this was a, a dredging that was also supposed to widen the inlet that was part of what the dredging was about. And the theory was that we, you would increase water flow in and out, so you would increase flushing. And in ways that I couldn't begin to explain, this increased flushing was supposed to reduce the nitrogen in the cove. Uh, and it was being pushed by a, a group in Orleans who believed that this would work. So, but it never went much beyond the study. Oh. Late, late and a little soggy, but. It was raining hard now. It was. Oh my. The, uh, well, my goodness, how timely, Jane. Okay. The we just left all of your things for you. Oh, I was well, going to say, we're done? Yeah. Well, That's always my favorite part of a meeting. <laughs> the end. The, uh, actually, we've, I, well, we haven't talked about water supply. We haven't talked about groundwater plume. Um, we haven't talked about the Minnesota schoolhouse down there, but we did. Uh, Dredging, and we did all of waste management. Okay. Oh, oh, I know. Yeah, I know. There was one more going to talk about. But let's. Make, do you have things to tell us? Um, well, you know, as some of you are in the 208, you know, we're in the planning process, putting together the technical memos that are going to give us um, guidance on options for possible remediation strategies for both salt pond and town cove so that's good we're making progress there that's been a, it's been a you know something that's been in the works for a while that will sort of lay out um, what we can do next our next steps um, we have had some discussions with the cape cod national seashore and trying to form a partnership that will benefit us both and i think that that is in the works as well so that's a good good thing Stormwater, we're working on that um, with Cape Cod Commission. Um, there has been a plan that was designed that's not really implementable uh, for 
monetary benefit. You know, for what we would get out of it, it's not really worth it. So we need to go back to the drawing board on a bioremediation approach to the stormwater um, there. But it's, again, I think it's, it's in progress. Um, the landfill and get investigation continues. Uh, many of my environmental programs are overlapping because the, the, the dictates of the, the landfill investigation overlap to well regulations that we're considering. So um, the Board of Health on Thursday is taking up discussion on um, well, the well regulation revisions. And there will be a section in there right now. This is still a draft document. And should the board decide to adopt the document, it would become a regulation. So this is a public hearing. Anybody with comments is invited to attend. And what it does is um, we have some environmental responsibility in terms of eliminating the spread of contaminated water emanating from the landfill and you know, going down gradient, any down gradient receptor. So um, the Board of Health's regulation is, is geared towards um, addressing the, those issues. So that's um, been a big issue to, to tackle. And so we're, we're getting there. Um, those regulations address the question of whether or not uh, people in the landfill area can keep their wells. Right. It, 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 it relates to conversion of wells. So there are restrictions that will apply in the down gradient, what we're calling area, you know, mandatory hookup area. So those regulations pertain solely to those that, that particular targeted area. But we also are adopting regulations that will cross over to other individuals, just more of a policy procedural type thing. Whereas, say, for the vast majority of East Ham residents that are not in that zone, if you wanted to keep your well for irrigation, we will be um, requiring a, a, just a permit, an administrative permit that will convert that well from a potable well to a non-potable use. And um, it's just a paper trail that we will need to keep because there are other issues um, in the future we might need to address, such as conservation, water conservation, such. So we're going to need to know who has a converted well um, for those purposes. So that's why we're going to document that. But that would just be a straight administrative process. As long as you've met the plumbing criteria and the plumbing inspector has approved the uh, separation from the municipal system, because of course there can't be any cross contamination from a private well into our municipal water system. So it has to meet all those inspectional components. But um, so the regulations will address those wells as, as also as part of it. So, um, I, th I think those, those are sort of the big things that I'm involved with right now, landfill, um, water regulations, uh, wastewater planning. I, I've got a, a, a point that I could talk about, and that might give you a little bit of time to see if, run your mind to see if there's anything else. Um, the Association for the Preservation of Cape Cod uh, held a workshop in the past uh, three weeks or so, and I attended it. And what they talked about there was basically the, the concept of what they call a, a rain garden. And a rain garden is a place where stormwater coming off a parking lot or road or something like that, or some roof, can go and um, uh, basically uh, not mix with other surface water and have a chance for plants to trap um, contaminants uh, and in fact in some way uh, reduce the contaminants. So um, there was a woman by the name of uh, Kate Kenner and uh, she uh, spoke a good hour and a half or so 
and she went through the, the, the science, the technologies, the process of, of how this all happens. And she um, uh, talked about the fact that you can sort of divide your, your contaminants up. They could be oils, solvents, things like that, or they could be um, elements, mi minerals, lead, things like that. And she brought in the idea that um, there are plants that actually are very good at um, drying out an area, and, and that, that, that would be a gain because if you uh, are moving the, the uh, water out of an area for, uh, through what they call transfer evaporation, then the surface is in fact uh, still a bit wet, but it's, uh, the natural breakdown processes can happen as opposed to they don't really happen as as fast if you're actually in in, in water and she t so and she talked about uh, pl plants that um, are accumulators of, of metals uh, whereas other plants aren't and she was speaking from the fact that she teaches this subject at the Harvard University uh, graduate school in landscape design and um, the uh, and she, she she knew the science of it well, and she also knew the practicality of it well. In other words, when you make something, perhaps called a rain garden, you got the issue of then maintaining it. So you know, how do you make the thing so it's almost nearly self-maintaining? And um, the. Uh, another thing she, she said, I guess just kind of pointed out to you, she's written this book. <laughs> uh, it's a big book, but it, uh, it um, basically seems to be the, the, the textbook for, for that subject um, for where we are here in the United States. So she has what plants do what kind of thing, uh, what situations work, what don't work. And the... One of the things she mentioned that kind of fits in with us a little bit is that I guess when she isn't teaching at Harvard, she's got her own private company, and the name of it is Off Shoots, that's one word. And it does um, essentially look into uh, these issues of how you can get plants to, to decontaminate uh, a contaminated situation. The, um, uh, and you know, when you think of, uh, what we call the brownfields, where there's been old factories and stuff like that. That's basically, you know, what she's talking about. But she said she has a contract with Mass Department of Transportation to survey Route 6 from the canal to um, the um, uh, rotary down here in Orleans. And she w has been asked to look for places that are high priority for fixing. And, and what we mean by that is that where there's runoff coming off Route 6 that would threaten, um, say, a municipal well field. They're stopping at the rotary. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're getting there. We're getting there. We're almost, we're almost to the rotary. <laughs> the, um, um, and also, also where we have runoff going into where we expect there to be good quality of water. In other words, where people are, are swimming. And... and she is to serve that, uh, survey that area, find 20 places that she would recommend as being high priority for where the state should do something more. Um, and of course, I found that incredibly interesting because we have our situation here in uh, Minnesota Schoolhouse Pond where we, we're getting a runoff directly from Route 6 uh, and we seem to, and Minnesota Schoolhouse Pond seems to fit the definition of a high priority uh, surface water body. We, you know, we do have that cottage community there in the summertime, and, and we do know that the state uh, samples water there for, for bathing water quality in the summertime as, um, as part, part of their responsibilities. So um, I'm, um, I don't know, I was just kind of making a mental note to uh, stop and a year, year from now, in some way, contact uh, company offshoots and Kate and say, well, how, how did your uh, survey of Route 6 turn out, and uh, could you possibly extend it? 
up into East Ham, or, or do we have a situation in East Ham that's so comparable to some of the situations you found where you were surveying that, you know, people just have to step up and do something more about it? So, um, um, all right. The, I, I guess I could ask the, I, if we want to talk a little bit about water supply, I can tell you that I saw water flowing out of the hydrant on the East Ham side of the circle down there, a newly installed hydrant. So I know that while it's not water to use, there's water moving all the way from the water tank all the way down to that little road that, you know, you go around to the right and then you go to the wild care place. There's a fire hydrant sitting right there beside the road. and. We're a lot further along than that. The East Ham El Elementary School has water. They have been connected to the water system. Uh, and as of yesterday, uh, any property that has an existing curb stop, which is, I think they said, what, there are about 220 of them so far uh, in East Ham, uh, can apply for connection to the water system. The permit system is up and running, and uh, well, that's going on. And I would guess, uh, since Robert B. Hour is doing the landfill, that that's, I would guess, probably well along. I mean, the, the town is contracted with him to, uh, with, not with him, with them, with the company, to do the connections in the landfill area. So uh, I, I would think that a lot hopefully, <laughs> a lot of people in town uh, will have municipal water soon, and I hope to be one of them. Is, is the My library, application goes in this week. What is, is it? Is the library connected? Uh, I don't think the library is connected yet. I the didn't library, hear that. Actually, they had a ribbon cutting today at 10 yeah. o'clock at the I time know. of our meeting. They do have a temporary CO, and they do have water. Oh, they have town water? Mm -hmm. They've connected it? Okay. Yes. This is yeah, I the last I, I, I thought heard they were kind of waiting because they didn't want to have to have a temporary well in the meantime. Right. So they have, um, they are, they're they still have some lingering yeah. compliance issues, but. They had a, a CO means, what does CO mean? The certificate of occupancy. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that's good, so. They it still is have moving. some fine tuning to do, but um, their wastewater system is operational. They still have some outstanding compliance um, requirements, but we managed to. And it'll be too late when this meeting is over, but tomorrow you can go get a book. <laughs> I know, I didn't know where to return my books. I had my books oh. and I had no box. Yeah, my, box my, is gone. My uh, wife was there too. I, I said I wasn't there, but I knew. She was, um, and she had a book to return, and she asked the librarian where to put it, and she said, hand it to me. <laughs> so she handed the librarian, because well, there was no book a, drop. They, oh, there is none yet? Oh, none I yet. wonder what, I gave them to someone else to return. No, that, that's, a, that's, that's a sort of a, I, I don't know, if remember all the each other, but there was some problem with, with the circulation desk. Uh, I guess it did quite what they wanted, so I don't know. So they don't yet have a circulation desk in, in place, but they, they will have a temporary solution to that problem. Well, I've had to deal with it. I said, I said this at 10 o'clock this morning, it was handed to the librarian. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right, I don't know what my, I, do, I had someone else hand deliver them yesterday, so I don't know where they went. You know, the trailers have been closed for a week, right? Um, I was out, away, so yeah. I'm, I'm not quite sure when the trailer closed. Yeah. Yeah, it did close. Okay, uh, last week? Yeah, yeah, I, I think, let's see what, I lost track of the dates. Yeah, it was it was it was closed for a while, and that what they were doing, and I don't know if they had any success. They were urging people who wanted to take out a book instead of taking out one, take out several, and then return them to the, the new library. library. <laughs> That's funny. That would have I, I would have returned a lot them of to people. another library if I knew it was going to help them out. I didn't really think about it that way. But uh, I don't know. Call that, call that stock in transit. Right. <laughs> so anyway, if you got a curb stop and you've got a contractor or a plumber, you can file your application for connection. Good news. Yep. Um, do we, do we want to bring up the subject of the inventory of aquatic plants? I, I have not. Um, I have been 
I have comments I, which I didn't have time to really thoroughly review before I got back to our consultant. I know I, we missed the window for this year anyway, so I have not moved on that. So that's in my court, but. Okay. The, um, um, I do not have anything further on um, a design for a wastewater f structure at Park Street. Um, I guess it's probably coming up on time that I should ask Neil what the status is. Um, While we're talking about water, I should mention also that there's uh, November 17th, which is tomorrow, right? Thursday. Today? Thursday. 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 Today's Tuesday. Okay, you can see I'm <laughs> really on top of this stuff. <laughs> uh, there will be what is being uh, described as a celebration of the municipal water system here in this room starting at 5 o'clock. Uh, and it's unclear to me exactly what will be going on. Apparently there will be some officials from DEP and the other state agency that's relevant here and they will be receiving thank yous from the town for the help that they provided in making things move smoothly and quickly and stuff. I, I don't, I've, I've heard some descriptions of what it's about, but I, I don't have a good sense of what the rest of it is. But if you're interested in applauding uh, the startup of the municipal water system, Thursday night at 5 o'clock will be a time to do it in this room. Hopefully the Board of Health meeting will be over by then. Oh, that, that's right. I forgot. <laughs> well, you, you, you'll be urged to speak quickly. Yeah, and it's a really full agenda. It helps to have time pressure. Right. <laughs> so, um, well, I've come to the end of uh, topics. Um, I, I'm, I'm suggesting that in December, uh, it will have been a year since we sent Sharon Shipley a letter recognizing the, the uh, things that they brought to the town's attention concerning Minister Schoolhouse Pond. So um, bring up that subject for, for talking. Um, the, we do, uh, I guess we'll do, minute, do minutes of the October meeting in December. In December, yeah. That's good, no problem. So um, that, unless anybody has something more to Bring up. I don't have anything for this meeting, but I would like to discuss in December what we sort of started to discuss and never went beyond whether or not it's worthwhile to do a revision of the, the card that goes out after you have your water tested. Mm -hmm. uh, even if we can't, even if it's not something that could be done quickly because we have a stockpile, <clears throat> we can make a decision one way or the other and then it'll be there and for later on. So uh, rather than have people go searching I will re-email uh, what I had sent out with sort of the Do reasons for Do you have the text, it. Adele? You have the text of the card? Yeah. Because we could scan it and send it. That's easier. No, I, I have it on a, I, I did it before. Okay. Okay. So I'm just going to go back and pull that stuff up because that's what I did. I did yep. scan it. Yeah. yeah. Good. So I'll, uh, I'll email that. <coughs> this is for the um, font, the... Uh, Nitrate uh, testing? Yeah, when, you know, the card you get, uh, yeah. and it, it comes, I'm reminded of it because my husband had recently had a conversation with somebody <clears> about whether they were going to hook up, and said, oh, no, we, our water test comes fi back fine every time. He had no idea. Other tests. <laughs> he knew it was under five, but that's what he knew. I was doing so, his nitrate, though. Uh, yeah, so, but, you know, do what you can. <laughs> <clears throat> So, okay, yeah, not seeing any other items coming up for business. Anybody with a motion to adjourn? I yes. shall move. So moved, second, I see a head. Well, those in favor, please <laughs> identify by raising your hand, saying aye. 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 I see six of us, so yes, <clears throat> we're at six zip.